So I think there's a couple of reasons why we're seeing uh, many more robust peacekeeping missions. Uh, the first reason is that there's more occasions now when peacekeepers are being deployed into um, conflict zones where there's no longer a peace to keep. So robustness is required because peacekeepers may have to use force uh, to meet uh, various elements of their mandates. And the second reason uh, we need more robust forces is because we're asking peacekeepers to do more and more things. So as the mandates have got longer and longer and the uh, tasks more complicated, uh, peacekeepers may well be faced with more um, spoiler groups or actors that see those um, peacekeeping actions as a threat. So I think those are the two main reasons why we've got more um, robust missions. And I think there's a debate at the United Nations at the moment as to some people who support the growing sort of trends towards robust missions and other actors who are more critical of them. If we take the critics first, I would say, um, the critics tend to worry that if we get more forceful and militarized peace operations, it's going to have a number of negative consequences. Uh, the first one would be maybe that we're undermining the UN's impartiality and that there's a concern that if we use force at uh, more militarized actions against uh, various opponents and spoilers, that will undermine the UN's message um, about being impartial and may tip it over to being um, one of the conflict parties. And the second main concern I think the critics have is that the UN's peacekeeping mission is not really well designed to use force, um, certainly not consistently. Um, UN missions often have big trouble generating relevant forces, so what type of troops might be needed for these types of robust engagements? Are they going to come with um, intelligence support and good information gathering um, capabilities? Are they going to come with medical support and the ability to you know, quickly evacuate casualties if peacekeepers um, you know, get wounded or, or killed on missions? Um, and do they have um, sort of mobile protection? Armoured transportation is becoming increasingly important when peacekeepers are targeted by um, improvised explosive devices. So I think that's the second concern, that the UN is just really not well geared up to, um, to support these types of robust missions. The short answer is yes. I think we are seeing peacekeepers getting more into the realms of counterinsurgency. So if we look at what UN and other, particularly African peacekeepers, are doing now, in places like Somalia, um, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, or in Mali, or Darfur in Sudan, you see them having to engage in a number of um, different activities. I would say they're a mixture of state building um, mandates, trying to support elections or promote the rule of law. They're also being asked to protect civilians and engage in sort of atrocity prevention activities under the um, responsibility to protect idea. But they're also now being increasingly used or asked to use explicit offensive force against certain groups that are not willing to participate in peace processes or, or being peace processes down. So if we look at the um, M23 rebels in Eastern Congo, Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb in Mali, Al Shabaab in Somalia, maybe Boko Haram in the Lake Chad Basin, more and more peacekeepers are having to get into this business of, of sort of counterinsurgency. Now I would say here then there's sort of two options. Um, who is going to respond to do this counterinsurgency? On the one hand, we can see UN blue helmet missions, but this is very much new terrain for them. The UN peacekeepers are not used to doing these types of activities. And the second type of um, operations we see are coming from Africans themselves. So the, the regional task force against the Lord Resistance Army or the multinational task force against Boko Haram, and now we have a, a G5 Sahel force in the Sahel or the African Union mission in Sudan against Al Shabaab. These types of partnerships between African and UN missions, I think, are going to be the future for how we deal with these types of things. And then to the new threats they face, yeah, I would say the, the big two that peacekeepers are having trouble dealing with. On the one hand, um, IEDs, improvised explosive devices, more and more of these things are appearing uh, across the Sahel and in Somalia. And the second big challenge, I think, is the, the nature of organised crime and how organised criminal activity is fueling uh, insurgent groups like Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram or Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb. And peacekeepers don't traditionally have much experience or capabilities of dealing with these organised criminal networks sort of during the war. So I think those are the two major problems they're having to face.